Today, I'm gonna recreate this cloning effect from Olivia Rodrigo's Get Him Back music video. I'm gonna show you step-by-step -step how to make your own version using After Effects and see if their new Rotobrush 3.0 is up to the test. My name is DJ from Eternal Visuals. Let's not waste any time, let's get into it. Just to give you some background, about 90% of the shots done in this music video are done with what's called a motion control rig. This is a machine that can do the exact same camera movement over and over again with millimeter precision. They use this expensive device so that they can easily clone Olivia during moving shots. But there is one scene where it looks like they do a zoom out with an artificial camera shake with a cloning effect and I thought, okay, sure, I can do that. But I also love this scene where she's walking through a hallway and passes herself a purple object. And I thought, when I just do both effects in one shot. So where do we start? First, I need a location. I wanted to replicate the scene as close as possible, so I chose my living room. In order to get the best results, I need to make sure that all the versions of myself, no matter how close or how far away they are from the camera, they're in focus. To accomplish this, I had to bring my f-stop or aperture on my camera to f14, which means I need more light. So I set up these aperture lights at max, with soft boxes pointed at the same direction as the incoming sunlight. I also adjusted the curtains to act as diffusers to soften the light over my background character, as well as block the light reflection in the window. Gotta love curtains. If you don't have access to lights, my best idea I can give is to film outside. The sun is the best key light in the world. Because we'll be doing a digital zoom in post-production, I recorded the scene in 6K so that when I place it on a 1440p timeline, when I zoom in, it won't look blurry. I recommend filming at the highest resolution possible. Once I had my scene, I did a test shot doing all of my clone actions. I filmed myself passing the ball where I thought I'd be sitting multiple times, then pretended to catch it multiple times at different heights and positions. But after seeing where I was naturally catching it on most takes, I went back and filmed it again with a handful of variations. Once I thought I captured what I needed, I imported the footage into Adobe Premiere. I scrubbed through the footage and when I liked the action of the character, I dragged the clip onto the timeline. I started with the background character and moved my way up to the foreground, stacking the clips in order on top of each other. Once selected, I adjusted the transparency on the top two clips so I could see each action overlaid of the full sequence in sort of a ghost mode. I happened to find two clips that the downward trajectory of the ball lined up almost perfectly. This way, I didn't have to play with speed or position of the ball, which usually makes it look unrealistic. Once I had each clip in place, I brought back their transparency to 100, sent them to DaVinci Resolve using an XML for their color grade, and then brought them back in and exported each file as its own video. Now for After Effects. In order to use Rotobrush 3, I'm using the beta version available on the Creative Cloud under Beta Apps. I imported all of the clips and dragged my middle ground clip onto the timeline. I grabbed my Rotobrush tool, double-clicked my clip to enter Rotobrush mode, and made sure 3.0 was selected. When I began selecting the border for my character, I soon realized that most of my scene was made of the same exposure level. Me, the furniture, etc. And the colors I was wearing in the furniture were all mid-tones. So basically, I was trusting the power of this new rotor brush with subtle color variation, which usually doesn't end well. I actually kept the middle couch pillow in the rotoscope to catch the shadows and subtle movement from my body. This helped ground my character into the scene. I ended up using the Refine Brush tool over my entire head and shoulders to make sure that I got the highest detail around where I knew a clone would be passing. Other than that, and it taking a million years to process the rotoscope, definitely because of the 6K footage, I was pretty impressed with the results. Even though I felt some of my borders were a little sloppy, the borders seemed to snap right onto my edges and act like shrink wrap. I was pretty impressed with how the Rotobrush handled everything. It still had some breaking points where I had to pause and reselect areas to let it know what I wanted. Revolutionary? I wouldn't say that, but it definitely has improved and appreciate Adobe investing in improving this super powerful tool. Once it was done processing, I freezed the clip and went back to see the results. I adjusted the shift edge and feathering slightly on the shot to better hide the border. Once I was happy with the result, I isolated the shot, made sure the transparency was enabled, and exported the clip. Then re-imported my new alpha clip and deleted the rotoscope clip. That way I could watch it back in real time. The 6K footage was really making my PC hustle. Then I repeated the exact same steps for the foreground clone. Roto brush selection, refine edge selection, process, freeze, test, then export with the alpha channel and re-import. 
Once I had all my final layers on the timeline, I added a duplicate version of the middle ground clip and made a mask path to follow the ball into the air. I kept the mask as small as possible and played with the feathering to hide any variation in color and light. Once I was happy with the path, I dragged the ends of the clip to just contain the length of the ball movement. Then I added a duplicate of my foreground clip and create a mask path for the downward movement of the ball until it reached my hand. And that was the final touch to get my completed sequence. I did go back and create some small masks on my foreground and middle ground clips to get rid of some unwanted pieces, including the hand at the beginning. But other than that, it was good to go. Now for the zoom and the camera shake. I selected all of my layers, right clicked, and pre-comped them into a new sequence. Then I created a new composition with the same frame rate, but resolution of 1440. Then I dragged my 6K comp inside my new comp. I know it's confusing. Then hit S on my keyboard to open the scale settings. I brought the scale to about 75% to match the frame in the music video, and then moved two seconds forward and scaled down enough that I'd be able to see the hand catch the ball. I didn't drop the scale all the way down because I wanted to leave some padding for the camera shake. I hit P on my keyboard to open my position properties, and then alt click the timer to open the expressions window. I messed around with the wiggle function until I found a speed and shake that I was happy with. I eased in the last keyframe and then went into the speed graph to make the transition to stop even smoother. And that's it. I haven't done any type of cloning effects since I was a kid, so this was super nostalgic and so much fun to create. I hope you learned something today and can't wait to see you in the next one.